In the second installment in the new user, what do I do next? So in this one, we're going to focus on profiles. If you haven't checked it out, go back to number one uh, to understand what each tab does. The point of the next videos is going to be focusing on one section and diving into it a little bit further. So in this one, we're going to be talking about profiles. What do they do and how do we use them? But before that, we're just going to jump on down to settings, go into our application settings and just cover a couple of items real quick. For starters, if I'm working with Microsoft Flight Sim or P3D, I want to make sure Sim Connect is enabled since that's how we're going to do most of it. And also you want LVAR support enabled. We've covered that again in a separate video, how to install the LVAR bridge. So your settings for your profiles allow you to set a few things. And here, as you can see, we want automatic profile switching. Now this is a me thing. This way, whenever I load an aircraft, it's automatically going to switch to the profile I have assigned that aircraft to. Second, automatically load last used profile. So when it starts up, before we may even have a aircraft loaded, uh, SPAD.next is going to load the last profile we used uh, when we shut down. Also, you can enable automatically save profile changes and this will save instantly. I don't run that. Um, I'm just used to clicking the save button a lot. When we come to the profiles tab, now that we're done with settings, the first sub tab you have are your profiles. These are the profiles that you've created and assigned to the sim. Now, what you'll notice is on the right hand side, you can perform a bunch of functions. So if I highlight one of these, obviously the other functions will appear. So we can activate the profile. Same thing as double clicking on the profile. It's going to activate it. We can delete a profile. We can edit a profile. So if I want to change the name, give it a description, and we can come in and change aircraft assignments. However, we can also perform that with clicking on the aircraft assignments tab as well. You have device assignments. So inside of your profile, you have a bunch of devices and they link to the devices that you have connected. This is a way to realign and repoint things in case they're going to the wrong device, as well as to perform additional items. So here, there was a MIDI profile device, but it doesn't know what to connect that to uh, because it doesn't see the MIDI panel currently. So you'd be able to ignore, remove, um, or reappoint it if it was pointing to the wrong one. Just like there's a throttle prop and mixture that's missing. Well, that's because that device is not connected. Now, I'm also uh, jacking up my font size. So some things are not visible. So let's go back to appearance. Uh, let's change our font size. Let's come back here. Uh, let's go to back to device assignments. Uh, you'll also see identity. So you can also ID a device and it'll blink it uh, when they make that available. So that's for your assigning of devices in case things get out of order. Next, if you are happy with this profile and you want to share it with everyone, you have the ability to publish a profile. When you click on this, it'll let you include all the devices that you want to include. You can select whether it's all aircrafts or you can, speak, you can pick to specify the specific aircrafts that you want 
people to find this for. Next, you can make a new profile from this profile. So this is also a great way of, say, taking a 172 profile that I may have and cloning it so I can rename it and then add more functionality. Or like here, this was SimDude's uh, profile. I could take this and I could clone it so I could start pulling things apart or making changes uh, that I wanted to apply without deleting this other or replacing events in this other profile, which would require I download it all over again. So that's another way to basically take work you may have done on a similar aircraft. Um, a good example as well, maybe I take the 172G1000 and I apply that to the Bonanza to then take it and now start adding more to make that fit better with the Bonanza. You could start completely from scratch, so you can create a new empty profile, you can give it a name, and then start building completely empty from scratch. You can also open your profiles folder, that way you can see all of your profiles and where they may be located. So that's everything for your first tab. The second sub tab is the online profiles. And this is what gives you access to go in and find profiles that have been shared throughout the, the community with all kinds of controls, functions, and information. However, as you can see, lots and lots of profiles to search through uh, and try to find the ones. And of course, only this aircraft, only installed aircraft, you have a few other filters to expand or contract it. When you go to My Published Profiles, obviously this is looking at your user account and finding the profiles which you have published. What is a profile? A profile is a configuration set which you can assign a complete set of controls and changes to every single device and controller and even your FIP gauge assignments, which will carry through from aircraft to aircraft. So a profile can be associated with one or many aircrafts. Now, you can't have the same aircraft assigned to multiple profiles. What will happen there is whenever you go to assign an aircraft that's already been assigned, it will take it away. So as an example, let's go ahead and do an aircraft assignment. So we're gonna assign this aircraft that we're in now to this profile. That way when the SR-22 loads it's automatically going to load this profile for us. However, if I was to come and try to assign it now here, it's going to let me know it's already assigned. When you save changes it will uh, be overwritten. Do you want to proceed? Yes. So now this is no longer with that aircraft design and of course we come here and we see it. So profiles are a fantastic way for you to keep every single aircraft completely independent of one another with every control dialed in exactly how you want it and then have SPAD take care of auto switching every time you change the aircraft. Now, another trick, by the way, is the fact that you can always open another profile, go to a device, grab a functionality, whether it be uh, copying 
individual events or a complete device. Then going back while it's in the copy buffer, going back to the profile you were in, jumping to a control, and then being able to paste that event or that entire controller. So it's not like you have to worry about a single profile for a whole bunch of airplanes. You can just take it, clone it, and apply it. So that pretty much covers everything to do with profiles and what a profile is. When we move into the next installment, we're going to start covering things about bindings and controllers and how to go about assigning events. So as always, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and come along next time as we're going to get into some of the intricacies about button and switch events. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.